really starting to realise it now? Um, I wouldn't really necessarily put it down to any one thing in particular. Like, just like just gaining experience, I guess, over like over the time playing together. Obviously, played together in the uh, Queensland Open Pro Am. Um, a lot of experience from that. So, um, just like slowly gathering that along the way, and like eventually, sort of my chances came where and I took the opportunities. I think like everyone kind of gets, you know, I might I might have had opportunities earlier on in my career that I didn't take, and you know, if I hadn't have taken the ones that I did, they might have come up later in my career. But it's just, I think. I was probably a good enough player to get to where I am now. It's just, you know, I managed to take the opportunities when I did and, and capitalised. I guess quite a few young players have a lot of placings. You, you seem to have a real hunger when you, and a, a real uh, clinical way of finishing off tournaments, like to win three big events in such a short uh, space of time is really impressive. What, what do you put that down to uh, mentally or your game under pressure? Um, probably the same thing again, experience, because when I was an amateur, I, didn't, I really didn't win anything. Um, if you look back at my amateur results, I think I won like the New South Wales Junior and that was about it. I, I was always finishing pretty high up in the amateur events, but never could seem to, to get a win. And then um, I'd say I probably fell over the line a little bit in Dubai. I mean, um, sort of threw the playoff away and then got it back again. And I probably was never really a chance to win the tournament until coming down 18 on Sunday either. It wasn't as if, you know, it was mine to lose for, for a long period of time. So. I felt like I hadn't really actually, you know, won an event until until then. And even that, I still, it was good to win, but I hadn't like proven anything to myself that I could win, you know, when it was mine to lose. Um, and the Irish Open, I think, just buried kind of that idea for me because, you know, I led that wire to wire and gave myself plenty of chances to lose it. And, um, you know, still went ahead and, and executed really good shots down the stretch on Sunday. So from there, I just, I just felt like, you know, all of a sudden, whenever I got into a, a chance to win a tournament, it was just, I was going to get it done. And that was kind of ended up what happening with Bermuda. I didn't think I was really a chance to win that until a couple of holes into Sunday. And then you kind of get yourself into into a, a chance to win on, you know, going to the back nine. And it was like, I'm just not going to lose this. Um, that was kind of how it felt just with the experiences I'd had in the last, you know, 18 months before that. So, uh, unfortunately, I haven't really been in that position to convert one since um, but I'm, I feel like when I do get back in that position again like I, I know exactly what it feels like and you know what it takes to go and win a tournament. Uh, you've been a real strong supporter of uh, state opens and state PGA's in your rise. Mm. How important is it for a young Australian player to aim at those big two events in Australia, the Australian PGA and the Australian Open to get them on your resume? Yeah I think it's a great uh, I mean it's a great kind of bridge um, you know you get some of the guys like Adam and, and Cam and, and that back to play these events to, you know, and if you can if you can kind of get paired with them, you know, if you come the weekend or if you get an early pairing through the week, like you just learn a lot from playing with these guys. And I just think you don't realize, you know, how good you have to be or maybe how good you don't have to be um, until you kind of see it in fr with your own eyes in front of you. So I know playing with Jason at the Aussie Open in 2017 for the weekend, like we, as a team, we probably said that I matured and got experience of two years in, in two days. Um, it was just that, you know, that helpful for me. So that kick-started, you know, my journey quite a fair bit and giving me the belief that, you know, like I, I felt like I competed with him all weekend comfortably and he was a top 10 player in the world at the time and still an unbelievable player now. But, you know, obviously at the time was not far off world number one and I think he'd won a major and 18 months prior. So to know that I could you know, bring it with him. Um, that gave me a lot of confidence to go and play through, you know, anywhere else in the world. Just when you look at your schedule, like, is it a non-negotiable to come back to the Australian Summer of Golf? Do you plan that, that far in advance that you'll be back no matter what? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it's a non-negotiable. I mean, um, I love coming home. Australia's obviously a great country. Um, it's good to come back and see all your mates and um, just even playing the golf courses that we've got here as well. They're just bit more of a strategic test than probably what you're used to playing overseas a bit so I enjoy coming back to play um, you know enjoy coming back to see my family and friends so it's like where you know where possible I will try and come back and play I think um, you know and it's just the Aussie public doesn't get to see much of us either we just you know a bit of an enigma that pops up on the TV on a Sunday night or a Monday morning on KO or whatever program is here now that we pop up on so it's good to get back and actually um, you know, see all the fans here in, in flesh.
Can I ask you quickly about the President's Cup? Obviously that was a goal to try and make that team from a long way out. You were so close to making it. How have you reflected on that now? Did you, was it disappointing initially straight away or did you just move on with it and get on with things? Yeah, I was really pissed off I didn't make that team. Uh, I thought I had a lot to offer and um, I felt like my form was decent leading up to it. I didn't think I was, I didn't think I was out of form. So I was pretty disappointed when I got the call to say that um, I wasn't in the team. Um, it was always going to be hard because that US team was so strong. So, you know, the boys did really well to, um, you know, to make it the contest they did because, you know, a week out, everyone, the way the press was, they were talking about it being a bit of a whitewash. So um, it was good to see it be a contest. And uh, I think I'd like to think that I'll play one of these eventually. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty disappointing to, um, to miss out on that one. Was that tough to watch when you saw the um, couple of, Look, to be honest, I was sat in a yacht in Miami drinking, so I didn't find it that tough to watch. But, um, yeah, like, I don't know. They, they went a lot off the stats and a lot off the numbers, and, and those guys suited that golf course the best. So, like, you can't, you know, obviously a couple of them didn't play the way they would have liked that week, and you can't really select a side two or three weeks out, or I can't remember how long it was out, but you can't select a side three weeks out from the tournament knowing that they're going to play well. So um, it just didn't go the way that Trevor would have liked um, for them to go. And um, yeah, it's easy to sit here now and say that I could have offered more than, you know, what those guys did. But, um, you know, they 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 obviously think they made the best picks they could leading into that um, week with the information they had. Can I ask, mate, the balance between coming home and I guess that release of pressure and that relief of coming home and then the competitive aspect of these two tournaments that you want on your resume. Like, how do you balance the, I guess, the feelings of relief at coming home and relaxing and the competitive side of it? Yeah, so I came home after Zozo, so I spent three weeks, oh, two weeks in Australia then, and then I've spent last week here as well. So I've probably gotten the relaxation bit out of the way. Um, you know, the Tim Tams and the Palmers and um, the beaches and everything, so I'm probably back a little bit more in that mode of like let's go win a tournament um you know i think over the years you've probably been guilty a bit of like the season's just so long the schedule's so flat out you come back here and this is yeah this is a break um so i think this year i'm a bit more ready to go and um i would definitely like to be playing this 17th party hole here late on sunday <laughs> lucas so uh, give us a, a bit of a history of your holding one uh, resume uh, relative to the fact Taylor made have got the million dollar hole here at the 17th, which is a uh, short club for everyone in the field. Yeah. Uh, what's your hole in one record and uh, what have you won? Um, yeah, so I mean, Jamie Glazer will be thrilled for me to recount this. Um, he's a big fan of all our hole in ones. So uh, I've made five. Uh, I made one in probably, I've probably only made, I've probably made three that are like, Actually, five. I don't even sure to be honest. I've made three that were like any sort of reasonably worth talking about, and they're not. I didn't, I didn't win any anything for them anyway. I um I made one at the Vic Open in a practice round on the, I think it's the twelfth on the beach course. I don't. I'm not even sure what order it's being played now, but it's par three way down the back near um near the Barwon Heads course, and it's like it just sits like there's it's sort of big amphitheater around the side and the back of the green, and it was in a practice round. I hit it at a pin that I shouldn't have been and Dom yelled at me for aiming at that pin and then got up there and was in the hole so um, that was funny and then uh, I made one at Kiwa in the PGA practice round as well same thing practice round I don't even know if these count I was the first shot at that hole so I'm, I'm claiming that it counted um, and then I made one at Castle Stewart in Scotland which is they played the Scottish Open there in 2013 there was like when I was an amateur we were playing this kind of challenge um, you know, it's sort of been set up through the VIS and, and Golf Australia against, I think it might have been like against Scotland and, and another country. We'd sort of gone up there for a couple of days to play and I made one with a four iron there uh, on 17. Other than that, most of them just been sort of in practice around around home and that kind of thing. But obviously, um, Jamie's here this week. Jamie hasn't made a hole in one. He's played golf for 30 years well. He's a good, he's, he says he's a single single figure golfer, but I've seen a lot of shots that would say otherwise, um, and he's never made one, so I know he'd be thrilled for me to make one here on 17, right in front of him, because um, I, I know that I'd be looking for him in the crowd um, to go and point out to him that, what do we win, a million dollars? Or someone wins a million dollars. So there's a million dollar hole in one, don't know what that means, but I'll be pointing that out to him as soon as I, as soon as I do make one, if it, if it happens.
Can I ask, mate, just finally some world ranking points, top 50 in the world, you're only just outside. Is that any kind of a motivator these next two weeks? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not really even sure what the field, um, what the points will be worth this week. Kind of, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at the field enough to know what it'll be worth, but um, I know if I win, I'll probably move up in the world rankings. So that's definitely the focus. Um, obviously, top 50 at the end of the year will get Augusta, so I'd love to get inside that and, and go back there again. Um, I feel like my game's trending in the right direction at the moment, so whether it's at, whether it's at Christmas or one of the next cutoffs to the world rankings, I will be playing at Augusta in April. I'd like to think that. Um, obviously, I can't control everything, but I, I do feel like there's not as much pressure as probably what it looks like. So, um, yeah, it's... It's always motivated to get higher in the world rankings. I mean, it's an interesting one with all the live stuff going on at the moment, whether the world rankings still hold the same values they did 18 months ago. But um, for now, I have to, you know, it's what I can focus on. And, you know, higher, the higher I can be ranked in that, the, the better I feel like it is. What are the plans next year with the, uh, two, with the, uh, with the uh, two tours? P- PJ Tour and DB World yeah, Tour? Yeah. Um, I want to play a combination of both. My, my winner's category wins it. Winners category runs out at the end of next year on, on the European Tour, the DB World Tour, so um, I would like to extend that and keep playing. I, I enjoy playing both tours. I enjoy being able to pick and choose playing, you know, whether, you know, the start of next year, I've got the luxury right now of, you know, I can play some events on the West Coast and on the PGA Tour or I can go and play in Europe and, um, and play some events over there. And I, I like the luxury of being able to do that. Um, obviously, it's, there's some... There's some cool events on the on the DP World Tour and some ones that are pretty special to me with the Irish Open and, and Dubai. So I'd like to be able to, you know, not have to worry about getting invites for those events and um, just going and playing them. And, you know, DP World Tour were great to me when I first came out. They gave me a bunch of invites, so I, I would like to support them as much as possible as well. But obviously the PGA Tour is pretty brutal. The guys out there are playing 30 events a year. So you feel like, you know, if you're only going to play maybe 18 to 20 on the PGA Tour, you're giving up a fair head start. So um, it's... It's a challenge to play both tours, but um, right now I'm 26 years old. I think I'm in the best shape of my life and, you know, I've got the best opportunity to be able to make both tours work. I'd like to try and do that whilst I can. Okay, guys. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, Thanks Lucas. Lucas. Cheers, crew.